For as little as $1 per month, you can support independent journalism by supporting Mia Media on Patreon. That's mere pocket change to support quality local content creation. To subscribe, visit patreon.com slash m-i-e-u-m media. Thank you to all paid subscribers for helping to grow Mia Media and for supporting independent journalism. The most controversial issue in Connecticut today is not guns, abortion, or even Donald Trump. It's whether tolls should be re-implemented to help fund transportation infrastructure. Connecticut had tolls from 1958 through 1985, but scrapped them because federal law in the 80s barred states with toll roads from using federal money for road projects. The toll plazas at the time also led to congestion which in turn led to car crashes, such as in this infamous case. January 19, 1983. A semi-truck full of potatoes barrels into a line of cars waiting to pay their toll at the Stratford toll booth. There was an explosion and huge fire. Seven women and children were killed, most burned beyond recognition. But times have changed. Newer technology does not require that cars stop or even slow down for tolls to be collected. And with an average of four out of every five miles of Connecticut's major roadways being in either poor or mediocre condition, according to research in a joint proposal by Connecticut House and Senate Republicans, something needs to be done. Some, including Governor Ned Lamont, say that tolls are the answer. In October 2018, then-candidate Lamont pledged that only large trucks would be tolled. So you don't foresee a, a toll on ordinary drivers? I don't foresee that at all. Is, is, is that a pledge you want to make today, that that will not happen? Uh, that's a pledge that not going to happen. I'm going to do tractor-trailer trucks. That's no tolls do. for regular passenger cars? No tolls for tractor, for regular passenger cars. But in the midst of the current legislative session, Lamont reversed course, writing in an op-ed, the truck only option provides too little revenue, too slowly, and too piecemeal to make a meaningful difference. Some were unhappy with this. What brings me out is uh, a certain governor that was less than truthful about uh, what he supported and ran on. Ned lied, he broke a promise. Did you vote for Ned? No. People that don't tell the truth up front to everybody, how can you support them? These are all opponents of tolls, who attended rallies on Saturday hosted by an organization called No Tolls Connecticut. With nearly 100,000 signatures on their petition, multitudes of rallies, and a loyal following on social media, the anti-toll movement in Connecticut should not be taken lightly. Mia Media interviewed a number of attendees, both on and off camera, to find out more. Our, our taxes keep going up and up and up and up, and we don't seem to see much in the way of benefit. So we don't see our schools getting progressively better. We don't see the roads being better. We don't see our towns kind of growing. We have a real estate conveyance tax. We have social security and pension taxes. We have um, taxes on gifts and estates that other states do not have. In other words, we are piling on. In fact, we have a hundred of uh, every nuisance taxes on services, including yoga, and there's more that are being proposed. How much? I think it's 17 and a half, something like that. To go to Hartford from Danbury? From Danbury. And they're putting, what, 50 some odd tolls up in the state. Many opponents argued that they consider tolls to be a tax, and a costly one at that. According to WTNH, these are the discounted prices for in-state drivers. Costs may vary depending on whether one is traveling at a peak time, and commuters will receive an additional 20% discount. Whether one considers these prices to be expensive is a subjective matter. Additionally, advocates of tolls argue that more toll gantries will allow each tolling location to charge less. This will mean that shorter trips will not be charged at the same rate as longer trips. I'm opposed to tolls in general, but I'm, a, I'm afraid that the uh, legislature is going to use this, uh, what they consider billion dollars in the general fund instead of just for highways. Don't subscribe to the idea we should just continue to spend, send money to Hartford to be lost or wasted or mismanaged until we have nothing left. Uh, they never looked at anything else to cut spending. First thing they said, let's raise more taxes. 
The idea of cutting spending repeatedly came up, but people kept falling back on vague generalities of what that entails. So I decided to press some people about what specifics they wanted to cut. I would postpone Sanctuary City right now because not that I am against immigration, but if we can't take care of our own, how are we expected to take care of someone else? What do you think we should, uh, Connecticut should spend less money on? Social programs. Uh, like what? Uh, welfare, less, less tax, more taxes for the lower income. Specifically, um, I don't have the, 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 the social services end of it, but I didn't work for them. Very simple, very simple. Take all your sanctuary city money, it shouldn't be. That's money that we should be spending on our roads. We should be spending it in the state, not just throwing it away. Case closed. Whereas supporters of tolls, who are typically Democrats, argue that additional revenue is crucial to repairing infrastructure, the consensus from those at the rally was that cutting state spending, a position typically advocated by Republicans, is the only way to go. Aside from one anti-toll Democrat and one underage attendee, everyone at the rallies I spoke to voted for Bob Stefanowski in 2018. Stefanowski opposed tolls. Some Stefanowski supporters at the rally even alleged that a conspiracy kept Stefanowski from winning. Uh, did you vote for the current governor? Excuse me? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean that he's robbed? Uh, well, just because there were some, what I would consider irregularities in some of the voting things that went on. Um, there was a lot of mass swearing in at the last minute. There were people, reportedly, voting after hours. Um, and I really think that somebody needs to investigate. Yeah, he should have won. He give up too quick, I think. Because they were still making voters in Bridgeport. What do you mean by that? They were still bringing in new voters. Why do you think it is that the Republican, the Connecticut Republican Party doesn't bring suit against Bridgeport or challenge it in some legit, you know, legal way? I don't know. Although they are billed as being nonpartisan, the anti-toll rallies are undeniably conservative. Republican politicians were there, many people were advocating for conservative causes separate from tolls, and one man with a loudspeaker was even bragging that right-leaning Fox News opinion hosts would be covering the protests. We're going to be on Fox News! They ain't going to... They ain't going to... Fix. He's going to cut all the towns and stuff. Cut their... At another point, Alderman Vernon Matthews Jr., who is running as a Republican to become the mayor of Waterbury, endorsed the statement that, and I quote, liberalism is a mental disorder. I oppose toes because one, Waterbury is their per capita as far as income. And... No, I didn't. Um... No, I did not. Um... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so getting back to what we were saying. Um, when I gave Alderman Matthews a chance to clarify, he dodged the question. So when the guy said that liberalism was a mental disorder and you agreed with him, what, what did you mean by that? Basically that you'll believe anything that is given to you in media, not you, but that's given in media that people tend to believe instead of research. But all in all, proponents of tolls, and also Democrats, should perhaps be worried. The anti-toll movement shows no signs of slowing. Whether No Tolls Connecticut will transform into a broader conservative movement is yet to be seen. But if this many people are willing to show up on a Saturday in winter and stand outside for hours, it's hard to imagine that they won't also show up to the voting booth. I mean, at the end of the day, when you're an elected official, their main job is to get reelected again. And if there's enough pressure put on them, there's enough um, seats that are, you know, that, that could be up in the air next time around, it's gonna make them think about it. And, and I, it only, it's only gonna take one or two of them to switch sides. And I think it's gonna be a snowball effect. And it's not just us. I've got tens of thousands of people behind me that are fighting this every day, calling the, calling the governor, calling their reps, showing up at rallies. So I, I am pretty optimistic.